Hello everyone! Season 4 is here, and that means... Sinking and depression? Yeah, but that's not what I... Ego and distortion? Yeah, sure, but I... Gacha addiction? You already said sinking and depression. Yes, new battle pass! And with it, a bunch of new egos and your budget for the season. In this video, I review the new egos as usual with a quick analysis of the BP value beforehand. So let's get to it already with the first part. This battle pass total rewards, including both paid and free parts, tie up to 1950 free lunacy, 300 threads, 150 silver EXP tickets, 80 gold ones, 1 level 40 boost ticket, 60 encephalin modules, 20 encephalin boxes, 200 random ego shards crates, 519 nominable ones, 20 extraction tickets, 1 season 4 3 stars guaranteed DK extraction ticket, 3 card decorations, 2 announcers, 2 banners, 1 Zayin Ego, 3 Teth, and 2 Vav. That sort of things. In comparison, here are the rewards from last season's battle pass. It barely changed? That's why I said quick. Outside of Ego rankings and the guaranteed 3 stars being for season 4, it's the same. So here's a link to my last BP analysis if you want details. Let me copy paste a few things real quick and... Uh, hold on a sec. There we go. Those numbers are the value of the BP converted in Encephalin if you gained everything it has through other game modes like EXP excavation or through BP rewards. So everything is the same, assuming that Mirror Dungeon 4 ends up granting the same rewards, which is very likely. Well, one of those lines just became false, though, which is the experience one. So let me explain why. There are two ways of seeing it. First, the XP compared to max level. To get to level 40, you need 91,700 EXP. So the battle pass gave us, with its 201,700 EXP, about 2.2 max level IDs. But that was the last season. With the new season, they increased the max level to 45, which also increased the required EXP to get to max level to 129,019 EXP. So with the same amount of EXP, you get with the BP the equivalent of about 1.55 max leveled IDs, so the value somewhat decreased. The second way to express this difference is with the new EXP excavation stage. These values were calculated by using the level 38 XP stage as a measurement unit. However, we now have a new stage, which gives us 2 blue EXP tickets, 6 gold ones and 3 silvers for a total of 12,600 EXP. Fun fact, this increase is the same than from the level 33 to 38 stages. The EXP for level increase did not follow the same linear function, unfortunately. But that means that to get to the same amount of EXP than the BP, you need to do this new stage 17 times instead of 19. This translates into 51 modules, so 1020 encephalin or 102 hours. This isn't much of a change, but I still think it's important to show. Especially because if they don't adjust this in the next season, it will be even harder to increase units levels to max, which will make endgame more grindy and less achievable for everyone especially newer players. And yes, I'm not only talking about the battle pass. But now, let's get to the juicy part. Ego's review. I'll be analyzing and scoring them like usual, based on Uptide 4. A good time to mention I have a playlist grouping all of my videos with those analyses. But let's do those in order, starting with bygone days, and first, Gregor's version. Always fun to start with the worst ego of the BP. This one is a bit of a mess. First, the weak points. Pretty much the wall awakening. Only one attack weight for an update 4 death is a rare sight, for a 6 cost especially. It also rolls pretty low, with minus 3 offense level, and consumes sinking count to benefit from additional effects. And there is a condition, if the target is defeated, which is not even that good, as 3 sinking potency on multiple enemies encounters after killing is really irrelevant. And one curse is barely not worthy. The Ego does have higher base powers than average though, and acceptable SP heal, being mainly support. His corrosion version is more attractive to me. While it still is one attack weight, it can clash way better, can inflict a ton of gloom fragility, some sinking count and 3 curse, which is the best status in the game. Why? Because I am very biased. 
The passive can be some good resource generation in sinking teams. So both this and the corrosion goes well with Gregor's new hair ID, not only by being fueled by gloom and lust, but also because the corrosion can offer him the SP variation for his passive. The awakening isn't as good for the opposite reasons, since it refounds SP. SP region is valuable, but that's not enough to save this pot. I mentioned that it's his first gloom resistant though. Finally, I don't take opportunity cost into consideration when raiding, but I have to mention that gloom is in high demand and Rimeshank exists for sinking. So overall, 2.25 out of 5 is the best I can give for this one, barely saved by the corrosion and passive. Next we go to Yi Sang's version, and while we go down in grade to Zayin, we actually go up in quality. Finally a sinking ego for Yi Sang. He does have lower rolls for the same cost, but that's about it for the problems. Look at the passive already. Plus 2 clash power on Rimeshank, I mean sinking targets is already great, and goes well with Spice Bush. Both Awakening and Corrosion have 3 attack weight, Corrosion even being able to go to 5 with Gloom Resonance. Both skills inflict sinking on targets, with bind on the ones that already have enough sinking. While the Corrosion inflict a fixed amount with additional bind, potentially on more targets though, the Awakening can have an increased amount of sinking potency infliction on targets with Gloom Resonance, up to 15 on 6 res in focused encounters, and can go higher in regular encounters. This amount is spread randomly between targets, so that means that using it on one target, we inflict it with this total amount, making it the highest sinking potency inflicting skill in the game now. However, of that means this ego's utility outside sinking teams will be limited, mainly for damage, and maybe some bind or sinking SP loss compared to legitimate having paralysis. I mentioned to the base resistances, which can be better depending on the conditions too though. So overall, I'd say 4 out of 5 as a strong sinking support, being 4.5 in them and 3 outside them if I had to separate it. Following now, the electric screaming egos, with Dawn's version first, being a tet, as well as their second charge ego besides Teleport. Because it is charge, obviously. However, while Teleport is based on charge gain, this one is for spending it, being a very offensive ego with both higher rolls Offense level and attack weight. Well, it has only 2 base attack weight, but can grow up to 5 with enough Envy Resonance, aka 5. Both Awakening and Corrosion function in a very similar way, increasing attack weight and damage with Envy Resonance, then spending 20 charge count to increase damage, it's being refilled on kills. However, while the Awakening can struggle getting the 20 charge count, especially because it is a limit without Ego Gifts and you lose 1 at the end of the turn, meaning you need support or a second slot to be at 20 before you go use, the Corrosion just converts some of Dawn's HP for the missing charge and then blasts everything. This version also has more damage increase than the Awakening, making it more deadly. We're talking about 66 damage on up to 5 targets at 6 NV resonance, without weaknesses or everything else. Ouch. The passive isn't as conditional as it is very targeted to a few of our ideas in fights with multiple enemies. The cost for this is a base 6 total, which can be fueled by air middle ID, which is one of our two best ideas for it, with obviously W done. Damaging egos are not always the most used, but this one's potential is very high. So overall I'd say around 3.75 out of 5, as it can do really strong damage even outside our intended ideas, just needs some HP, even though it is more focused on the corrosion, Awakening being weaker in comparison, and she would still need Envy Res preferably. Next, Mersault's version. This one, you might have guessed, more focused on support. Well, let me start with the Corrosion, which is very similar to Dawn's. It gains attack weight with Envy Res, but you don't gain damage from it, and you don't gain as much damage from spending charge. In fact, you don't gain any charge, so it's more awkward and will do less damage. It can inflict two paralysis though, so it's better as a support. The Ego inflicts Rupture too, but it's not as valuable. The Awakening is more Envy and Charge support, giving Charge to allies, the number increasing with Envy res, as well as Envy damage up. So as you can see, it might be a Charge ID, but especially Envy, and can be used early in a turn for Charge plus setup with W members. Mersault also gains Charge with it. The passive is more Envy resonant support, 
granting to himself and to allies offense and defense level up. Also, only on himself if there is any res, so it can still be of some use. Of note, the cost is only of 5 scenes, what a steal, and it is Mercer's first envy resistance. Like for Dawn, it is best suited for his middle and W Corp IDs. Overall, I'd say 3.5, as it can be a strong setup for specific damage turns, as well as overall good support for charge team. It also needs envy res though. And now, we're getting into the fun part. Because PM didn't give us one, but two Vavs this BP. Before getting into Otis, I'd like to address something for both of the Awakenings. You might think that 10 sanity cost for a Vav is insane, and you'd be correct, because the rest of the cost is located right there. Instead of paying it up front, they're losing it a bit every turn and for 3 turns, for a total cost of 34 or 40. Well, that's one way of making SP loss efficiency relevant, isn't it? But anyway, that implies that they won't lose their head's chance in one go, especially for rolling heads with those egos, but that also means you can't refuel it at once with an SP heal ego. But if you have some SP healing like Honglu or Middle Marsault, you can easily negate that condition. That's funny because this sleeve gains binds afterwards, so it would have been easy to heal his SP before his next turn. But anyway, this is only relevant for Awakenings, as Corrosions don't have it. So now, let's start with Otis. Both Awakening and Corrosion can roll 30 or more, but are totally focused on Tremor support. They also have 5 attack weight, and can gain 2 more through 4 or more Sloss or Pride Resonance. A bit specific. Both also trigger a new form of Amplitude Conversion, making Tremor Red, or Tremor Fracture. If you don't know how Amplitude Conversion works, I have a short for it for DK. But basically, it entirely replaces Tremor on the target by this version. Note that it will also replace the DK version if present. This one has only one specificity, as long as count and potency add up to more than 20, easily achieved with one LCC Bishmel skill 2 for example. If the target is staggered, the stagger level will be increased by 1. So stagger will be stagger plus, and stagger plus, stagger plus plus. This effectively means that type's weaknesses will be increased by 50%, so a direct 50% damage increase to stagger the targets. This can translate into massive stagger burst turns. But that's not all. As Awakening has a free tremor burst, which effect is doubled, and Corrosion can have not one, not two, but three tremor bursts, one just requiring a tail, which isn't the hardest on the Corrosion. All of them are also without consuming count, even increasing it, and stagger threshold raised by 50% for up to 450% the amount of tremor burst. On the 99 potency target, that's close to 450 stagger increase. And you can inflict fracture. So it's pretty good. And that's on up to 7 targets, so you can use it easily in fights with multiple enemies too. Compared to Ophi Eskiv DK, which is only on skill 3, it is an ego, so it can be used anytime, as long as you have the cost. Which is 10. Speaking of cost, the passive can easily refilm some of it on kills, or even if target is staggered, which it should often be. It obviously mainly fits smaller Otis, and covers for a lot of her weaknesses. However, this ego's utility outside Tremor will be very limited, mainly to damage, passive, and resistances. So 3.75 out of 5 is the best I can give compared to other valves. But finally, the king is here! Kneel before the king in binds! I already covered the sanity cost earlier, so let me mention on hit effects. Tremor and Sinking Infliction are more flavor than really useful, the Bind and Free Tremor Burst being more interesting. Well, the Bind of Corrosion can be somewhat useless, but I'll get back to it very soon. Because most of the Ego's strength is in its after attack effect. Awakening gives 20 Bind to his cliff in exchange for 2 attack power up and a special status before the King in Bind. This effect just makes his skills with 1 attack weight, so most ideas skills, deal their damage to 2 more enemies with the least HP, like if they had 2 more attack weight, which can effectively triple that damage. Already a pretty good damage setup on some. But wait, what about the corrosion? Well, not only does it do almost the same, with 1 more attack power up, just replacing Before the King in Binds by Before the King, which is the same but at a 50% rate of damage, but it also gives the 20 binds and 3 attack power up, as well as 2 gloom damage up instead of special status, to 2 other allies. 
and this can be on every ally with 5 gloom or pride resonance. Slightly costly, but that means you can set up a turn afterward where all your units will have 3 attack power up and 2 gloom damage up, at the cost of not being able to redirect clashes, which is why the bind on enemies can be useless. And this cliff as before the king. So overall, pretty good setup. And if it's not enough, the passive grants to allies using resonance with his cliff, offense and defense level up, as long as it is 4 or more. Bonus point for absolute threats. So very strong damage setup for his cliff and allies with corrosion. Needing corrosion is a bit costly though, especially with the 11 sin resources and the sanity cost as well. For IDs, best fits are obviously Ophi for Tremor and Sins, as well as Pequod who can really deal a huge burst of damage with Envy Combs, and maybe even Sun Shower his cliff with the SP loss and bonus gain. Note that our cliff will have trouble with self bind and she is cliff with attack weight. But I would expect the next is cliff 3 stars to be a great fit. So overall I'd say 3.5 out of 5, as it can be strong, but hard to use and has its downsides, mainly losing strength in fights with only one target. So there we are, this is the battle pass of the season. Its value, even if the same, will need to be updated next season to fit the XP need better I'd say. It's still good though. But ego wise, this might be the overall best batch of egos we got since season 1, as most of them can be strong on the right situations. I especially didn't expect we would hit more tremor already. They might just lack more general uses. But can you hear this? It's the sound of Hofi's cliff falling down in my rankings already. What do you mean you only hear our voice? No, 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 don't listen to that! And that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Final message, Kento 6 is over. Without entering into details, I think it had its highs and lows, but it was, as usual, a pleasure. The new season roadmap is out too, and I don't know yet what I'll do. So subscribe and check the community tab for more updates. In any case, see you next time, and keep your sanity high in this slow descent into the inferno.